Hey there, my friends. Let's have a spiritual conversation about hope. And specifically, is hope just another four-letter word? I'm hosting a project right now called 19 Days of Hope, and it was very intuitive for me. Like, obviously, in the midst of this global craziness and the disruption to our lives and the fear that this is causing on many different levels, that what we need is hope. And I had a lot of people respond to that very positively, but as I was doing research, putting more of the project together, I became aware and reminded that hope actually has a fairly poor reputation, that hope gets a bad rap. And I think that that is because there are different kinds of hope. There is egoic hope and there is holy hope. And that's what I wanna explore with you today. You know, when hope gets a bad rap, I think it's seen similarly as luck, something that may or may not pull through for you and may or may not cause you to spend your life away in lottery tickets or stay with that unhealthy relationship uh, or stay in, you know, pining away for someone, hoping things will change or get better. That that hope is sort of like, um, you know, the rope that eventually hangs you. Like that is what I see a lot of people associate hope with, and I would say that is very much egoic hope, which really isn't even hope. It's more like attachment. It's attachment to our desired outcomes, it's attachment to our own projections of what the best results would be for wh whatever in our lives. It's attachment to what we want or what we have designed in our mind's eye. And I think the most effective forms of, you know, reflecting on what you would like and taking steps towards that must be coupled with detachment because otherwise, if you become fixated on what your only possible desired outcome is, and then that doesn't happen, you blame hope, and you can become cynical and just completely disheartened. And one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about hope is because not that I'm a Pollyanna and I'm just like sunshine all the time. It's actually quite the opposite. Hope is something that I have had to cultivate a relationship with and really not just try to understand what it means, but adjust my own subconscious relationship with hope. And let me explain a little bit why that is and how I have come to this place and then how we can more deeply experience what hope really is, which is in alignment with reality, I believe. Okay, I'm using big concepts. So some of you may be familiar with the Enneagram, which is this ancient, somewhat mystical, but very practical personality typology. And I definitely want to do a series here with this podcast and video series going into the different Enneagram types. But I'm just going to give you a very broad overview that it's Enneagram is a nine pointed symbol, it has nothing to do with Baha'i faith, which also uses a nine pointed symbol. Um, but it represents the nine personality types. And then the intersections of the lines for the star uh, show the directions of integration and disintegration for the different types. And your type is not based on like a horoscope or what the stars were like when you were born, but rather it's a very sophisticated understanding of the ways that each of us chose to adapt as we were becoming socialized as infants and young children and how we chose to lead in this life to try to avoid pain and get reward and all of these things. So it's very interesting. It's this ancient system that's actually very simple to understand, but 
is extremely psychologically sound and sophisticated. And my type, I'm known as a type three, which is associated with motivation and achievement and success. The United States is very much a, a three honoring society and culture. We like to sort of put someone up on a stage and say, yay. And, uh, and threes love that kind of energy. And if you go beyond just that sort of caricature, surface level definition of this quote unquote type, what drives them? This desire to succeed and achieve and, and be whatever sort of paragon or role model is actually coming from a place of dysfunction as all of our modus operandis are in this view. And there's nothing wrong with that. It is seeing that and understanding that, that we then have the opportunity to transcend and grow and drop those dysfunctions and grow closer to God. So it's okay. Um, but their dysfunction is thinking that they are somehow separate from the flow of creation, from the flow of the reality and environment that surrounds us. And that is why they try so hard to succeed and achieve because they do not trust that they are part of the tapestry of life and they think that they have to instigate everything. They have to make everything happen. And that definitely resonates and speaks to me. And this is exhausting on an extremely deep level and ultimately a carrot dangling situation. And so the antidote for this, this chomping at the bit, never ending experience is hope. And that is why I have been cultivating a deep relationship with hope. And what hope means in this light, holy hope, you have to back up and talk about the fabric of creation. You know, scientifically, though we do not experience this with our naked eyes and senses, we know, again, scientifically, that all matter is, uh, is not solid and is of an ever-evolving substance, that everything is, at its core, at its atomic core, is, is the same and made out of the same things. I'm sure more scientific people are going to attack me on this. It's fine. Go ahead. But, but this, this much I know is true. So scientifically, we actually kind of understand this idea of oneness and unity and interconnectedness. And spiritually, this is even more deeply true that all of us and all of creation that we are all part of this majestic and immaculate dance and flow of creation, that we are not separate waves in the ocean, we are all the waves of the ocean. And that there is this intelligence and loving, optimizing, force that holds the reality of creation that we are a part of and that once you understand that and whether you understand it or believe it has nothing to do with whether it is true and real then you understand you have the opportunity to understand holy hope that hope is is that almost wordless trust that all of this flow is optimized and that God and creation will is is constantly moving everything including us including our intuition including 
the experiences of our lives and the smallest amoeba and the biggest animal and the biggest global crisis and the smallest little personal joy, that all of these are part of this optimized flow of creation. And because we are a part of it, we don't see the whole big picture. And when our egos interject themselves, and I love the definition of ego being edging God out, E-G-O, and we start to attach to what we think would be best or what we want, then we disconnect from the reality of hope, which is at a very deep level going with the flow, like spiritually resting in the fact that you are part of that flow and that you are not separate from that. So those are some of my ideas about egoic hope versus holy hope and what that experience of, yes, understanding it, but also just resting in it feels like and how being in that place of knowing we are held by creation and that we are integral part of it and loved and valued and I'll say it again held helps us be ever more gently guided by that force and also helps us just respond creatively and lovingly to life so I would love your thoughts the more dynamic and back and forth these exchanges are, the richer this content will be and the more all of us will grow. So please share your thoughts in the comments or the show notes. I really, really appreciate it. I really appreciate you subscribing and listening and liking and sharing and being a part of this journey. I'll catch you next time, you guys. Stay safe and sane and healthy and happy out there during this unique time. All right, bye-bye.